Um, I got some feedback from Mikhail Sorensen from your uh, presentations just after Easter. Uh, so I thought we'd relay that to you now and I'll also update you on some changes to the uh, course schedule. Um, so I don't think the, it was quite clear what the purpose of those pitches after Easter was and uh, apologies, I think a couple of you were a little bit miffed that you didn't get enough time to update your presentations. But really it was just to give you, uh, well, First of all, to have a layman, somebody who hadn't seen your presentations before, to be exposed to your presentations, to see if they could understand what you were talking about in your business pitch. Um, and it was also for us to give you feedback to propose how far you've got to go to where we see your final pitch. Uh, so some of the feedbacks, uh, feedback from Mikhail was he was really interested, really excited by some of the presentations. Um, I think me, both mine, me and Jacob were very positive at his response to them. Um, so that should fill you with enthusiasm and uh, uh, hopefully keep you, keep you motivated. Um, yeah. um, a few points he mentioned, so these are, these are directly from his text. Um, he was saying, um, quite a lot of you didn't do much about the pricing. Um, and also, um, some, some of the teams could have been clearer on the budget. And I know some of the teams don't have the budget figures yet, so it's a, a little bit difficult to go through. Um, but obviously, he's doing it from the mindset of being on the Venture Cup jury, and this is what the question marks he has over your presentations. Um, he also relayed the fact that quite a few of you didn't uh, work or touch on your business model a great deal. So things like your, your pricing strategy and uh, whether you're going to be leasing the product, providing a service, selling it, and so on. Um, he also suggested the team aspects um, where you, and he actually touched on this in his own lecture, if you're going to introduce your team, try perhaps suggest who the roles are. If we can build in uh, Jakob's presentation today, perhaps in the Venture Cup, you could say, uh, this is the CEO of the company, uh, this is the technical director and so on, uh, if you choose to do that. Um, implementation, this is probably the uh, area where you might be adding to uh, by the next presentation. So once you've got your proposal for your, your business and your, uh, your technical solution, what are the next steps? How are you going to implement your, uh, your business? Uh, the value proposition, I think he said you were quite good. Um, yeah. Uh, so you've done a, a reasonable job in that respect. So he's quite convinced of your, your businesses to that degree. Um, and then he was suggesting, of course, rehearse over and over again, and you'll have plenty of opportunity to do that towards the end of this course. Um, from my perspective, one of the things I, I think the most fundamental uh, feedback, and which I was a bit critical of, was many, many of you had no estimate of how much your product or service is going to cost uh, in order to make it, and then how much you're going to sell it for. So as an investor, I had no idea what profit you were going to make. And therefore, if I wanted to invest in you as a business, how much money I could expect to make from it. And this is probably the most fundamental thing to have in your business pitch. So those groups who didn't have this simple bit of information, make sure you have it. So just to quickly give some course updates, um, on Monday the 7th of May is the business plan deadline, so I'd like you to hand your business plans in, one to Campus Net, one to the Venture Cup, if you choose to do the Venture Cup. Um, then the Tuesday after, we're not going to have a lecture, but we're all going to be in here, and you're going to do your group work session. Then on the Friday, so it's a little bit of a switch around that week, on the Friday you'll have a chance to do your final uh, practice run of your business pitch. And we may get some people in. Uh, Jakob, you had uh, um, an invitee to come and view your pitches. We may get some seed capitalists. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but that'll be your final opportunity to get some feedback on your final pitch. And then, of course, the following Tuesday is your final exam. What does the exam consist of? Um, it's pretty much the same thing. So you have a five-minute, it's all on the website, five-minute pitch and then we'll just grill you on all your data for the next uh, 10 minutes. Um, I, can't, I, don't, I actually don't have time now to take any more questions. If you'd like to do it afterwards, uh, we have the, the next presentation, uh, but by all means, come and speak to me afterwards. Cool. You ready?
Can you hear me? Um, thanks for inviting me to this uh, session. I've been very much looking forward to it. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Lund. I come from Vexthus Hovedstadsregion. And for those uh, non-English or non-Danish speaking uh, students today, this is completely impossible to pronounce for you. Uh, directly translated, it's a, a growth house for Greater Copenhagen, metaphorically speaking, of course. But we take um, companies, startups, entrepreneurs uh, with, um, with the best um, growth potential and give them one-to-one -one sessions with uh, people, consultants in-house who has a uh, long track record of being um, owners of their own companies, some with success, others with lesser success, but at least a lot of experience that generated basic on, from the basis of that and giving some advice to, to these uh, new entrepreneurs coming up. Others have been CEOs of large multinational corporations like Siemens, Maersk, and so on. So it's a, a powerful team that we have here. Um, what I'm gonna talk about today, I'll shorten it a bit down because there's not much time left. Uh, very, very, very short introduction about business plan. You've already talked a lot about, a lot about, about business plans here, but we have like three, three bullet points that we, that we wanna stress out when we talk about business plans. Uh, what is Vex Tuso? Um, we have a collaboration today with Venture Cup. Um, I'll tell you a little about what we do and how we can help uh, startups in that relation. And some, some specific cases from, from DTU students and others who've been through the Venture Cup process and, and follow through with, with Vex Tuso. Uh, questions, feel free. There's not a lot of time, but feel free to, to pop in if you have any questions. So why do we need a business plan? Uh, three, three simple points. First of all, it's your initial uh, action plan. What are the steps necessary for you to move forward? Instead of writing your idea down on a napkin, speaking to some friends, having a bit on your Excel sheet, a little bit on a Word document or wherever, it's having a structured plan for yourself. And if you can structure your ideas and your thoughts, it's easier to move forward. Because if, if I have some ideas, and I need to st start talking to some investors or potential partners, but I also need to, to know about my market or customer segment. It's a bit difficult to move forward if you haven't made, made yourself a plan for that. So that's your own, your own little plan. That's, that's the main thing, I think. Obviously, bankers, investors are interested in looking into your business plan because they're going to see, uh, evaluate you on the basis of the business plan. Are you professional enough to be able to make a business plan? and write down and say, I am within a certain time frame, one to three years, I'm actually able to make a profit from my business. Obviously, if you have to introduce yourself to partners and others, they could be interested in, in seeing your business plan. So this is your, your, your thoughts. But basically, the main idea is to get your dream organized. That's what we say to people. And it's a dynamic process. It changes all the time. So the business plan that you're making at the moment I'm sure in a year's time or six months' time, it's going to be completely different. But at least it's an ongoing process. It's something that's really, really important. Uh, one of the ways that we work with uh, business plans or strategies or whatever, at the it's a simple, a simple tool like this that we call the transformation card, saying you are here today. Our vision is to be established as a company, you get our first customer, or uh, run a profit, or I'll, I'll become a CEO, I'll sell my company at a certain time. Okay. That's my vision, that's my goal for my company. It can be here, it's, it's divided into four quarters, that's, that means a year, but it can be three years, it can be a lesser time. But you say, I wanna be there in, the, in a year's time. It can be difficult today and sit, okay, what is the next step I need to do in order to reach my vision or my goal? So instead, try to, try to make the exercise say, okay, if I'm here in a year's time, what is the immediate step I need to make in order to reach the final destination? That would be, what do I need to do in quarter four to reach the final goal? Once you've dotted that down, then it becomes much more easier to know, okay, if, if I have to reach what I have to reach in quarter four, what do I need to do in quarter three and two and, and so on? So it's just a simple uh, process. And you see, it's divided into three seg or four segments. It can be, it hasn't really dotted anything down, but it can be anything like organizational structure, it can be your, your idea development, your, your network, network, how do I need to develop and build my network in order to reach that goal in, 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 in the end. Just a simple tool. Again, just to, to wrap it up, it's about convincing banks, investors, that you're actually able to, 
to, uh, to make money out of it and you're worth investing in. Okay, so in general, a bit about introducing into VEX2, so I just wanted to, to, to clear that up in the beginning. We're very good at starting up new businesses in Denmark, uh, performing very well compared to some of the countries that we normally compare ourselves with. Uh, loads of new companies are founded each year. However, if you look at the same companies five years down the road, hardly any of, the, any of them exist. So if something goes wrong along the way. Um, so this, this was some studies made by the Danish government in, in relation to their globalization strategy and say, okay, what we need to do is to develop more growth companies because that's the one that really creates value for society in terms of economic growth, uh, more revenues, exports, hiring more people. That's something that you can really, that can, something that's worth for the economy. Uh, for instance, Korea is really, really good at creating growth companies. They're not very really good at starting up new companies, but the ones that they start up are performing extremely well. Funnily enough, they're coming to Denmark and say, wow, you're really good at starting up businesses. We really want to learn something. So they have sent delegations to Denmark all the time where we say, fair enough, we can tell you what we do, but actually you're performing very well in the companies that you actually start up. There are some different structural issues in, in, in Korea that shows this picture. They have this similar system like in Japan with the Karetsu, yes? Sorry, South Korea, of course. <laughs> Good point. Um, yeah, so those, those are some of the issues that was why we, the government established the VEX tools. We want to create more growth companies, not just establish new companies, but the ones that really can accelerate growth. So they divided uh, the different, I don't even know the, the, the English term for it, but there are different systems or organizations. You can go to the municipality and get advice on how to start up your business. Um, but they divided up and say, the ones who start up hair saloons or coaching and others, fair enough, it's very good that we have these companies as well, but they are not the ones that will accelerate their growth. They're not be going to hire a lot of people, they're not going to start exports and so on. So we want to create centers of excellences like the VEX tools with five in each region that can focus on the companies that really can boost something and do something for the economy. Um, as it says, we're targeting SMEs and startups with the potential ambitions to grow. It can be anything from one to two employees up towards around 30 employees. Um, just a, a visual picture of what we do. We try to take these challenges that the different companies have and change them into uh, potential opportunities. So basically, like this il illustrates, says there's a toad, it's performing pretty well as a company, it's doing quite well, it's moving forward slowly and steadily. But if it really needs to, to take off, it needs, it needs some help from somebody who can give some advice and this and that. So you, you put some gadgets on so it can really move, move forward. So just an illustration of what we do. A typical process that we go through with the companies or startups and entrepreneurs that come into us is we go take them through what we call a growth wheel. Different aspects of what a company entails. So there's the client relations, there's one block, we have the operations, the organizational structure, and we have the business concept in itself. And we go through and say it's divided into four, four sections, each of these under, under groups. And you say, based on your perception of your company, say, can you, can you say on your networking scale or marketing and sales, how would you rate yourself from one to four? If you rate yourself as four, you're performing very well in that, in that section, so you don't have to focus your energy on that at this point in time. But we go through the whole, the whole uh, wheel, and typically three or four elements stands out where the company is not performing very well. An example could be that the company is coming to us and say, uh, um, my sales is not doing very well. I just need uh, one or two million Danish crowns so I can do a marketing campaign, because that could really boost my sales. And we say, okay, it sounds interesting. Let's just go through your wheel, <laughs> the growth wheel, and see where are, where are your main challenges. Because it, perhaps it might show that it's, it's not the marketing or the sales that's a problem. You might be focusing on a, business, a different bit, you know, a wrong business model. It could be instead of you know, point of sales, it could be let's, it's better within your segment that you're working on a subscription fee because they can generate some income for your company. And you won't be able to, to get uh, one or two million Danish crown in the banks anyhow, so you need to think differently. So try to structure your, your challenges and make a growth plan for on the base of that. So the process basically coming to us, companies are well more than welcome. We go through the growth wheel, try to define the problems that the company has. 
Um, we make a plan based on those problems that might be, or challenges, it's better called them challenges than problems, I think. There might be one, one to four challenges, let's say that. Uh, but it takes a lot of time and resources to focus on all the challenges at the same time. So it's better to prioritize them in a certain way because there's a limited amount of resources that you can use on hiring external people to, to follow up on things and so on. So we make a, a plan for that and measurable outputs and say, what are you going to do for the next six months, 12 months, 18 months? Uh, and once you've done the first points, come back to us and we can re-estimate re or re-evaluate what you're coming, the next challenges you need to go into. We are a publicly financed institution, so we're not allowed to do the actual implementation of, uh, of the work. We can just prioritize the challenges and say, here's what you need to focus on. Um, and then we can refer you to some interesting and very valid uh, consultants that can do the work for you. Uh, or you, can, you are more than welcome to do the stuff yourselves if, you, if people are, are able to do it. But there, there, there comes the actual implementation phase. So how we evaluate the companies or the co customers that come to us is, <clears throat> obviously they have to have interesting potential, growth potential, but they need to have the will to grow. We don't want to spend time on companies who don't want to grow and excel their business. So that's the basic basic product that we, we do in, in Vextools is this one-to-one -one sessions with companies. On, on the other side, we have some projects that focus on certain industries and sectors and that has interesting potential for the region in general. An example is uh, the Clean Tech Partnership, which is, uh, is uh, financed by Copenhagen Clean Tech Cluster and some of these public funds that, that, that you mentioned early on. Saying what can we do to facilitate, facilitate partnerships between smaller companies and startups within the clean tech field and partner them up with large international corporations like Siemens, Maersk, IBM, Dong, Danfoss, all these companies. So because if you look abroad to so the UK and the US, they are better at creating partnerships between small and big companies that can help the smaller company accelerate faster than they would, uh, would by themselves. And especially when you talk about high-tech companies, it takes a lot. It takes a while from developing the idea and the concept, you know, protecting your your patent rights, making a prototype number one, two, three, scaling it up, finding the proper investment, and then actually before you get the <clears throat> get to the market. You know, so if you can generate some partnerships with bigger companies that find interest in your product, that can really boost boost the, the development. So that's the, the main reason for this project. Yeah, as you already mentioned that. These are the companies, or the big companies who said in the sense that it makes sense for our product or our company, we can help the smaller entrepreneurs develop themselves. It could be Rockul who says some of the, one of the employees can be put into the board of directors of a smaller company. Um, IBM has done a collaboration with a company called Grid Manager that makes a, a software that can detect when the, the power is cheapest on the, on the electric grid. And they've had, they had difficulties in selling into a potential client because they were a bit unsure whether their, their technology actually worked, the IT software worked. So they went in co to collaboration with the IBM. So it wasn't in direct competition with an IBM product, but complementary. So they said, we'll test the software. And they did spend a couple of hours on that and said, well, this is approved by IBM. So this grid manager could go back to its former clients and say, if you have any questions to my software, you can always ask IBM because they've approved it. And that really boosted the company forward. We're moving from one to two employees to being 25 today. They start from Australia and Spain and so on in collaboration with IBM. Um, so that's something that can really help. And that's, I think, uh, maybe enough for the scale of, of some of your, your ideas, but thinking into partnership collaborations is a very good idea because you're not able to lift anything, everything by yourself. You would need to do some partnership in some sense. Within this clean tech partnership, we've done a collaboration with Venture Cup because we saw <coughs> that uh, we help a lot of uh, established companies, smaller companies, but established companies that are, that are trying to progress. But we saw a lot of interesting ideas coming out of universities, DTU, CBS, Oldbo University, and so on, uh, who had some very interesting ideas. And Venture Corp, they divided uh, their co business plan competition into different categories, one of them being clean tech. So we said, uh, there's a lot of focus on business plans and to develop that, there's a lot of hype around Venture Cup. You can win some money and be a part of competition, hold this network. But once co this Venture Cup is finished, um, what then? We have this great idea, but we don't really know how to move forward. 
So we said, let's, let's, let's do a collaboration here. So VentureCop does all the preparation with the business plan and the business mindset and so on. And once VentureCop is finished, you can enter into the CleanTech Partnership Program and move forward. And what we do there is we do a bit similar to what I, I talk, talked about, Bill. We do the one one-to-one -one session trying to build a startup plan, looking at your, your business once again. So you, if you're here at this, this point in time, what, is, what are the next steps that you need to move into? And we have these different, so we make a plan. We have a mentor program where we, where we try to find an, um, a senior person who can help you develop your, your business. Uh, because you might have a good idea about a product or a concept or a service or whatever, but the industry experiences might be, be, lack, be lacking. The network into that market might be lacking at this point in time. So what can we do to help your businesses or your startup companies by, uh, by appointing a mentor who wants to, to help your business? They, they don't charge any money for it necessarily. It could be in time that they want to share of your business, but that's something that, that, that you agree on an individual basis. The basic, basic is they don't charge any money for it. They, they do it because they think it's interesting. Trying to help you secure some of the, uh, the patent IPI rights. Uh, we've had cases of uh, students coming through the Venture Cup, uh, building, uh, developing a new LED light bulb. Very, very interesting. Uh, didn't really secure the patents. Uh, they got in contact with Philips. They sent all the drawings to Philips. They invited them to a meeting, presented everything for them, and uh, never heard anything from them afterwards. And now they're having really big troubles in filing a patent for this because it's well known and they've shown it to the largest competitor. They can't really do anything about it. So it's really, really important if you have a, a high-tech or technical product that is patented in some way, see if it's possible. Do something about that. Uh, be a bit cautious in the beginning, at least, about this. Not said that you shouldn't, shouldn't talk to people or pre present your idea and concept, but just be cautious about what you do sometimes. Uh, help them, help companies, help you start up uh, a, a new company, just register yourself, what type of company would be relevant for me in the case that I'm in at the moment, and help you build a network around your company. Some of these startups enter into the, to the rest of the normal uh, venture codes or clean tech partnership uh, programs, obviously sending you around in, inside VexTools, you know, if uh, there's there other help we can help you with. I have a few cases just to show you what type of companies or startups, you know this one already, so I'll go through it very quickly. Um, who've been through Venture Cup, Clean Tech Partnership, Bubble Program, and, and, and this, yeah. Oracling, you know, Mercury fee free centrifuge for small scale gold mining. Uh, the one, the Venture Cup, did a fantastic uh, pitch, <clears throat> a really, really well, thoroughly worked business plan. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm. They really wanted to do this. Uh, they went to us and said, well, which is the best type of company to register? At this moment, that's one thing we talked about. They had some. IP rights issues with the university in, in the US that they attended to where they developed the idea. Uh, we talked a bit, before there were four, four, four persons in, in the group. Uh, what are the different responsibilities of the different persons? You can't do everything, everyone, all the time. Some are good at you know, being more organized and doing the structures and some, some others are more outward going, can do the sales work and so on. So what is necessary and how can we, how can we optimize you as a group? How do we handle eventual investors? They've started knocking on their doors. Uh, what do we do? And how do we manage the Venture Cup prize money? And is, this is actually the, uh, I don't know whether you, you've heard about it already, but this is really the problem. That was really the problem for them because they had a really good business case. Uh, we talked a bit about, they wanted to focus on Colombia because there's a lot of gold mining and mining going on there, but they didn't really have any network. And uh, for four young students, three of them girls, uh, moving to Colombia and doing market studies, was a bit tricky. Uh, so we, we put them in, in collaboration with GEOS, which is a uh, geological ins something <laughs> institute in Denmark. Had a lot of contacts in Tanzania. So they did actually talk about doing a partnership with them. But then they found out that since they hadn't registered a company before entering into uh, Venture Cup, they had to pay taxes as a personal income, each of them, for the, of the prize money. So that caught a great deal of the prize money in the beginning. Then SU came to them and said, well, you've earned more money this year than you were allowed to. So you have to pay some of the issue back. So all of a sudden, all the money they won more or less disappeared. But kind of like kill the motivation for them in the, in, in the beginning, right? So they just said, okay, we'll, we'll finish our, our thesis. So and then we'll see what happens as we move along. But just a, a note to yourselves that if, if you see and there's a likelihood of you entering the, the Venture Cup final or, or whatever, have this in mind, you know, just register your company. It can be a sole proprietor or anything. 
just have, have it registered beforehand. Um, a second case called Lolle and Nielsen, they also entered uh, Venture Cup. It's not a clean tech company as such. <clears throat> they had a, uh, they participated in Venture Cup with a specific product idea. Um, they, um, they didn't you know, go to the final or anything, but they really had the drive and, the, and were passionate about their product, so they wanted to move forward. And the Venture Cup asked us, this is an interesting, this is an interesting group of guys, let's, uh, let's talk to them. Sure, we did that. So we did a strategy process, thinking, okay, you've developed a product like a, a machine that can lift, uh, I don't know, these uh, plaster plates and, and, and apply them to uh, below or beyond uh, three, meters, three meters and above. You didn't have, really have any product for that at the moment. So they've developed a product like that and they really wanted to move forward on that. But we kind of sensed that that was just one product idea that they were interested in. They had a lot of different ideas. So we talked about, okay, is it a specific product you want to work with or you, do you want to work with product development? Uh, so those were some of the strategy ideas, keeping them focused on which, which direction they wanted to move on with. Um, how, do you, how should they apply to public funds for, for some of the products that they were working with? Um, what do they do best as a consultant and product developers uh, compared to and who are their main customers in that relation? Uh, at this moment in time, they are well, well on the way, having a lot of interesting products. Uh, they've received some public funds that can secure at least some finer funding for them to build new business or new, let's see, new customers and clients. So it's a good foundation for them to have these public funds. Uh, they've hired two student assistants that can help them lift some of their working load so they can focus on doing some of the sales. So again, what are we good at? Yeah, sorry? I'm actually working for the oh, project. Oh, perfect. And, and they just hire us in, during a course. Yeah. So they, we work for free there and then we help them. Perfect. Really good case. Perfect. Uh, that's great. I mean, you get uh, interesting working experience working with them, and um, they have a lot of interesting ideas. And, and what they want to do is find out and, and get new product ideas, <coughs> talking to customers and sales. So that's what, what they can focus on. Right? So that's a really good uh, constellation. Something that you should be considering, or you could be considering as well. Uh, last one, I, I won't tell the name because it's uh, an ongoing, ongoing process, but they participated in, in, in Venture Cup as well, not a clean tech company. Uh, had a, has a really, really interesting uh, business model. They, they've developed like a, bis a baby alarm for smartphones. So I don't know whether any of you are kids, but it, today is like a walkie-talkie system, huge chunks of, of metal that you put in uh, next to the baby and then you have it on your on your dining table and then it starts screaming and then you can attend to your child. Uh, what they do is they try to implement, you know, integrate this into, the, uh, into a smartphone application. Really, really interesting, a very interesting business model. They've done the initial IP screening. We, gave them, we can give some support to that. To the initial IP, IP screening, you can get some support up to 50% of that through Vex tools and others. Uh, we gave them a mentor who has very much focused on the business development experience. They were very much focused on the product development, but didn't really think about the business model and, and so on. So we gave them a mentor that was very focused on that. <clears throat> so what, what, he, what he has helped them with is formalize the company. They've, he's helped them secure uh, funding of 3.5 uh, million Danish uh, kroner. They've been approved for a Comigang loan, that's through the banks, for an international launch uh, later this year and in the process of establishing a board of directors. So I've just given you three examples of uh, guys like yourself who've been sitting on a similar course like this saying, I want to... I wanna, I want to do something. I want to start a new business. Uh, what can I do? Let's start with, with Venture Cup. Wow, there's a collaboration with, with VexTools. And there's really a lot of interesting help we can get from VexTools. So let's try and utilize that. Um, small, simple things, but it's something that can really help boost your, your product and idea. So what did you learn in school today? Right. Just my main points. Uh, Organize your dream with your business plan. You can do different tools, whether it be a business plan of 100, 100 pages as the old school one, or you download an uh, iPad application uh, from this business model, Canvas, a very interesting iPad application that you can use that organizes you in a very simple and structured manner. Get as much help as you can from outside, whether it be Stardust, Connect Denmark, as you heard, ourselves, 
the municipality of Copenhagen has some interesting services and so on. There are loads of help out there. It's just a matter of, of using them. Uh, protect your idea when necessary or if necessary, especially in the initial phase. Uh, not saying that you shouldn't talk to others. I think the more you talk to others and get ideas and inspiration, perhaps collaborate with others, the, more, the, the greater likelihood you are for success. Understand your own strength and what you're good at. Uh, instead of trying to you know, do everything yourself, uh, partner up with somebody who's a bit different, like you have a different focus. If you're very much inward going, I want to develop my product. Uh, I don't like very much doing the sales part. Partner up with somebody who, says, who thinks that's uh, a thrill to do that because you're more likely to get success on that basis. Uh, and then again, don't neglect your own passion and perseverance because if you're talking to investors and others, they want to see the ones who, did it, who, who started up the business and developed the idea and invested. And if, they, if you can convince them with your own passion and your drive, you've come a long way. I think that was it. Yeah, thanks. Any, so, um, yeah. any questions for yeah. Christian? I know it's been a long day, but uh, many, yeah. uh, some of you have still uh, got some questions in you. But otherwise, uh, if that's all right with yeah. you, Christian, they could uh, can maybe contact you on your. Uh, You're more than welcome. Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course so uh, you, you know now you know a person in Vex to uh, Think about that because that's definitely an asset you can use uh, uh, to your own advantage. Uh, I know I have. Uh, so uh, I think we should uh, thank Christian by giving him a hand and uh, go to lunch. Perfect. Perfect.